Hey everyone, George here. Welcome back to the channel. It has been a while since I've done a video uh, with me on the screen, but I have been extremely busy lately and I just have not had a chance to do that. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's probably my least favorite and probably yours as well, but it's essential to talk about and that is medications and uh, your aquarium. Uh, so many people out there have multiple aquariums these days. The hobby is growing and people start out with one aquarium and before you know it you've got five, six, seven, ten, or even twenty like I have. And the bottom line is, is that we don't think enough about medication. So when we come back we're going to dive into that and we're going to talk about that. Hang in there with me, we'll be right back. So when we're talking about medications, we're talking about a variety of medications that I think that we should keep on hand. And this is uh, what I think are the essentials that cover all kinds of different things. And we're gonna talk about each one of these a little bit in depth so that we have a better understanding of how they're used, when they should be used, and how long they should be used. Uh, some of these are basic products, some of these are products that you've seen. Now uh, you're gonna look at this and think that uh, I'm sponsored by Seachem for some reason here, and I'm, I'm truly not. They're just products that I have used and I know work well. And uh, I think that if you try them, you will agree that uh, they are uh, probably the most effective medications on the market without overdoing it. So uh, we're gonna talk about these individually and we're gonna get into a little bit about why they're used, what the, they're used for, what the signs are that are in your tank that may give you a reason to feel like you need to use stuff like uh, antifungals and bacterial medications, um, uh, cupramine, which covers so many uh, different varieties of problems in your tank, uh, stuff that's specific for ick. Uh, this right here, we'll use that uh, as uh, uh, a vehicle to tell you a little bit about these two right here because both of these can be used in the water or they can be fed directly to your fish and this guy right here i think is essential for any tank that is being quarantined or if you have put a fish in your tank and you are concerned that you did not quarantine it long enough this is a very safe product so when we come back we're going to talk about each one of these and i'm going to dive into it one by one uh, going from the least, uh, well, let's, let's put it this way, the least of, um, dramatic of all of the medications up to the ones that I think are going to have the hardest impact on your aquarium and only use when you absolutely need them. So when we come back, we'll start talking about these one by one. So as I said, I don't want to repeat myself a, a ton in this video because I want to get through it in uh, a short period of time, but I want to be very effective and very thorough about these medications and why you should use them, when you should use them, and how long you should use them. We're going to start out with this guy right here. It is a product by Seachem called Paragard. Now what basically this does is it uh, will tackle things that are uh, anything that is parasitical at all. Uh, I've even treated ick with this. I've used this for external parasites that you can see on your fish. And uh, I've also used this for things like fin rot and that sort of thing. Now this is a very mild medication that does not have some of these uh, uh, very harsh chemicals in there that are going to really mess with uh, your bile system and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, Paragard I think is a very, very safe product uh, to use. I would use this if you are quarantining fish and uh, you don't see any real problems with them. I put this in there anyway, even if I don't see problems because it's a guarantee that uh, you're not going to uh, start your fish out in a bad way and it is not so harsh that it will cause problems for your fish to not eat 
and to not adapt to their new environment. So I just think keeping this on hand is really essential. Now, one of the main problems that all of us face uh, in the hobby at one time or another is ick. And if you have ick in your tank, you know what it looks like. It looks like somebody sprinkled salt all over your fish and it happens so quickly. You can put your fish in your quarantine tank and all of a sudden, a day or two later, you wake up and you look at your tank and your fish are just covered in this stuff and you're like, what happened? Ickex is absolutely the first uh, line of defense against ick and I truly stand by this product 100%. I have used this a couple of times. I've only had ick a couple of times in my tanks and uh, the times that I've had it, even if you have a planted aquarium, you can use this very safely and not worry about it. Same thing with the Paragard. If you have a planted tank, it's not going to harm it, but you do uh, want to follow the instructions on here and keep up the dosage on here to make sure that you have killed it uh, as best you can. Now, if you are using quarantine tanks or hospital tanks, Try to not have a substrate at the bottom of your tank because that's a great place for it to hide. Turn the temperature up on your tank to about 84 to 86 degrees. It cannot live in those conditions. Use this along with it and you will, 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll be successful in killing it in your tank. So this is a fantastic product. I think, uh, um, uh, Corey at uh, Aquarium Co-op pushes this really hard. This is where I got the information about ICAX and I have used it ever since Corey suggested it to me and uh, it's a great product. Now, if you have other problems, Canaplex is a bacterial and fungal uh, powder that can be mixed into your tank. It's a little bit harsher. It does not harm, again, the, uh, the bio uh, load in your tank and does not harm that. But this can be a little bit tougher on your fish because anything, uh, anytime we're taking uh, 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 any kind of antibacterials for ourselves, such as uh, uh, things that we might use for a infection or whatever, uh, they can be sometimes very hard on our system. And uh, this is the same thing with these. They can be a little bit harsh. They're not typically going to be something that makes your fish go through a real stressful period. If you see any kind of stress that's going on in your tank, uh, when you add these to your, your fish, uh, uh, tank and the fish are starting to look a little bit stressed you want to make sure that you put some charcoal in there and get this stuff out of there as fast as you can because some fish just do not tolerate this very well if you read the instructions on the back and follow the guidelines here typically you're not going to see any problems like that and again this is for more serious cases now this can be added to the water but it can also be fed to your fish. A lot of times it's, you can't get your fish to eat. Uh, only certain things like live worms or, or frozen foods and stuff like that when they're not feeling well. These are foods that typically they can't resist. And what I recommend is you take some of this, um, Rapasha, and uh, Rapasha is a formula of, um, it's like a bonding agent that will help make this medication stick to the foods that you're mixing it with and it'll turn into kind of a gel type thing so that when the fish swallow it they're guaranteed to get this medication and that's why I really recommend that if you're going to make up a dosage of this stuff and you make up enough of it to last through the period in which they instruct on the back of this that if you use this and uh, put it in a container and uh, put it in the refrigerator. It will turn to a gel and you can just cut small little cubes of it out and feed it to uh, 
uh, a particular fish. That way you're not, uh, you're not dosing your whole tank. You're feeding specifically to the fish that are affected. And this really works great for that. So the next one here, if Canaplex does not work, Metroplex would be the next step up. This is a little bit more uh, oomph to it, I should say. Uh, it's got a lot of abilities to take care of fungal issues, to take care of parasitical issues, and bacteria issues. This is uh, something that uh, I really, really have found that if you have to go to this step further here, it is something, again, that will not affect the uh, bio load in your tank. It is also something that you can mix with Rapashi and uh, get the same effect by directly feeding specific fish with that gel type uh, substance that uh, comes out of mixing this with frozen foods or whatever. And uh, as I said, you can direct it towards a specific fish and that way you're not treating your whole tank and those fish will noticeably improve within a day or two of receiving this. Now you can mix this in your water if you feel you need to treat the whole tank and you're concerned that your other fish may pop up with the same problems then I recommend using this in your tank uh, but to be honest with you the best results I have found is if you see a particular fish get that fish out of there put them in a quarantine tank and direct that fish uh, by using this uh, with Rapashi and feeding it directly to the fish. That way they get it internally, and they get it internally when they get it in the water, but it's just really not the same. Uh, this is a little bit more directed towards that particular fish, and it really helps a lot. And Metroplex, um, I have found that if the Canaplex doesn't work, this will absolutely work really, really well. Now, the next one is um, made by Fritz, and it's called Marison Oxy, and there's also Marison Oxy 2, which I don't have, but this is absolutely fantastic for fungal infections that are just really hard to get rid of. Uh, you've tried several different things and it doesn't work. This stuff is really, really something that I think um, I don't think I've not had success with using this. When I've used this almost 100% of the time, I would say, I have cured the problem with that particular fish. And, uh, you know, fungal issues are, are very strange. They, they can show up in different ways on your fish. They can be uh, rotting of fins and tail. Uh, they can be spots on the side of your fish or patches on the side of your fish. Uh, that are very obvious. Uh, this also covers parasites as well. So if you see obvious parasites, and I'm not talking about ick in particular, I'm talking about other parasites that your fish may get, uh, this will obviously, uh, you know, be your last um, approach to that. And uh, you should try other things first if you can, such as the Paragard, and uh, if you have ick, of course the ickx, and if you have uh, not tried the um, canaplex and the metroplex, then uh, you know use those first, of course. But this right here is absolutely a wonderful product, and uh, I like I said, I've had a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Uh, effectiveness uh, towards curing any fish with fungal or parasitical problems uh, that are uh, you know something that is not a more serious condition that your fish uh, uh, are not going to get over without multiple um, medications added to the tank now the last one I'm going to talk about here is cupramine now cupramine has copper in it and I don't like putting copper in my tanks because it's not something you can add into a planted aquarium. You must use this in a quarantine or hospital tank. Try to use a bare tank if you possibly can because you don't want to use this um, 
with plants and that sort of thing because it will kill them. I mean, it will absolutely destroy um, most of your uh, your uh, bio load in your tank, and it will also go after your plants. Your plants will yellow up and die off, and uh, it will really raise havoc on your tank. So, cupramine has copper in it. It's great for parasitic problems and things like that that uh, you just are not able to for whatever reason get under control with these other medications here and this would be a last resort because it does have some very strong uh, malachi green and uh, other things in here that uh, are really really just very very hard on not only your fish but your tank in general. So this would be a last resort, but you know, you need to have these things on hand because things can get out of control really fast. And if you have expensive fish or uh, fish that uh, are very special to you or whatever, and uh, I mean, you, you've not gotten anywhere with curing them for whatever the problem is, whether it's fungal or uh, bacterial or parasitical or whatever, cupramine is going to really, really help you to get this under control. This is very hard on fish sometimes, and it is also hard on, like I said, the bio load in your tank. So please use this in something besides your decorative tank or your community tank. Make sure your fish are isolated in a uh, quarantine or hospital setting and this will give you an opportunity to use this product without destroying your, your whole aquarium. Now what I want to talk about in addition to the medications is some of the environments in which you want to use these in. Now always with me whenever I have parasitical issues or fungal issues I try to turn up the heat in my aquariums and I try to go to about 86 degrees. Now when you get to that point, 86 degrees means that water gets warmer, means that your fish's metabolism goes up so you want to make sure you're feeding them a little bit more than they normally would get because during that healing process nutrition is important as well so you want to make sure that your fish, because their metabolism is going to go up from that extra heat, that they're getting enough food. The second thing, and probably the more important thing of the two, is oxygenation in your water. You want to have an air stone in that tank to make sure that you're oxygenating that water. Because when you get to 86 degrees or above that, or even at 84 degrees, or even in the low 80s, anytime you're getting into those ranges, oxygen levels go down and your fish will uh, be going up to the top and gulping with their mouths at the top of the water uh, trying to get oxygen and that's a clear sign that you've got a problem with oxygenation in your tank so if you add an air stone and i don't mean just a small little pump or whatever i mean something substantial that really is going to push some good airflow through that water and create a lot of oxygenation. Try to get a stone that has the very fine, small bubbles in it so that it mists through the water. It's not real disruptive and stressful on your fish, but make sure you do have an air stone in there to uh, be sure that your fish are getting oxygenation. Now, the last thing I would tell you is I keep these on hand, not because I have tons of problems with my fish. I have the occasional problem here and there when I quarantine or, or put fish in a hospital tank. Things pop up. Even in your healthiest of tanks, you can have things pop up. Having these things on hand is so important. And I would tell you, these two right here and one of these, I would always have on hand even if you don't have any problems at all because the minute that pops up you're going to find out it's probably going to be on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon and you're going to close the stores are closed on Sunday and you can't order it in the mail because you can't get it fast enough having these things on hand is going to save you a lot of anxiety and stress because 
you know that you can treat these fish right away and you know that you've got a handle on it as quick as you possibly can and uh, that is so important. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I will put a, um, uh, a uh, area in the description section about each one of these products here and where you can get them and uh, which ones I think you should keep on hand. Again, I mentioned these two right here and one of these two. Uh, I think you should always have, but if you can't for some reason uh, remember that, I will put that down below in the description area and that will help you to uh, remember which ones those are. But again, if you keep these things on hand, you will save yourself a lot of stress and anxiety. Again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for uh, being patient with me over the last couple of months. I haven't been on here much. But uh, things are getting back to normal. Uh, life was a little crazy. A lot of things going on with family. A lot of things going on with the COVID virus. And uh, I don't want to get into all that crazy stuff. We're all fighting our own battles. But uh, I really appreciate you hanging in there with me on the channel. The channel is growing. And uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. But I want to get back to some of the basics here and be talking about the things that are important to help you learn about what you need to do to have a beautiful and a successful aquarium. No matter if you have one aquarium or you have 20 aquariums, it doesn't matter. It's all the same to me. Again, thank you for joining me and we'll see you on the next one.